Hello and welcome to this video on angle properties of quadrilaterals. Now firstly just consider just some random quadrilateral like this. like this. Now if we were to split this into two triangles here, we know that the sum of these three angles is 180 and we know that the sum of these three angles is also 180. So can you see that these make up the total of the angles of the quadrilateral. So these add up to 180 and these add up to 180. In total, these four angles must add up to 360. So we have the total angle in a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. So the angles sum to 360 degrees in a quadrilateral. So let's use that to solve these two problems here. We know that these four angles add up to 360 degrees and we want to find this angle here. So we could just add up these three angles here. So we've got that 100, and we're adding that 100, and we're adding that angle there. And do you remember, when we have that kind of square symbol, that's a right angle, which is 90 degrees. So if we add those up, that gets us to 290 degrees, and they add up to 360. So we just do 360, subtract the 290, and that gives us the remaining angle, of 70 degrees, so x is 70 degrees. And what option two, if I just draw this quickly, we've got 93 here, we've got 101 here, and we've got 82 here, and we want to find this angle here. Well, we could find this angle here first, so if we just add up these three angles, I'll just do it quickly on my calculator, 82 plus 93 plus 101, that gives me 276. So we just need to do 360, minus 276, and that is equal to 84 degrees. So that means that angle there is 84. And then, because these two angles add up to 180 degrees, do you remember that angles on a straight line around a point add up to 180? We can just do 180, subtract the 84, and that gives us 96 degrees. Now we've also got angle properties of parallelograms. So this is a parallelogram. Remember, it has two pairs of parallel sides. Now suppose that this angle here was 80 degrees. Then we can sort of see by rotational symmetry that that opposite angle would also be 80 degrees. So we would say that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. Now we could find these other two angles by just realising that these four angles add up to 360. So if we were to do 360 minus the two lots of 80, that gives us 200. So these two add up to 200, and then we divide it by two because they're the same, we get this is 100. Now these two angles, you can see, add up to 180 angles, and we'll see in another video that we actually call these co-interior angles. So we also have co-interior angles that to be adjacent to each other in the parallelogram and they add to 180 degrees. Now let's use that to solve some of these problems. We've got this first parallelogram here. Now we can work out x first because we know that x is the opposite angle to 85 in this parallelogram, so we know that x is equal to 85. And then we can work out y, they're co-interior angles to each other in this parallelogram. And so therefore y is just 180 minus the 85, which is equal to 95 degrees. What about question four? We've got this parallelogram here, and we're told that DE, so this line here, DE, bisects the angle ADC. So that's the angle ADC. This angle here is bisected by this line. To bisect means to cut exactly in half. So we know that this angle is the same as that angle, because that line cuts this angle in half. So we've got that this is 100, and we want to find this angle here. So there's a variety of angles we could find. We know that this angle opposite is 100. We also know that the co-interior angle is 80. And therefore, this is also 80, but we're splitting in half. So that must be 40 degrees, and that must be 40 degrees. Now, we can get this angle in two different ways. We could either find this angle in this triangle, and then subtract from 180 to get the angles on a straight line, or we could just observe that that is a quadrilateral, so those angles add up to 360. So if we just do 40 plus 80 plus 100 to get the sum of these three angles, we get 220 degrees. And then we just do 360 minus 220, which is equal to 140 degrees. So that was the angle x. So x is equal to 
140 degrees. Now for this last problem, we've got these four rhombuses and we're told that they're equally spaced. So all of those angles will be 35 because they're equally spaced. And we want to find that angle x here. Now we could first work out what this angle is, like these angles in each rhombus, because we know that the sum of these angles is 360 degrees. So if we do 360 subtract four lots of 35, we get 220 degrees. And then, because these angles are all equal, we could just divide that by four. So 220 divided by four is equal to 55 degrees. So that means this angle here is 55. And then look, a rhombus is just an example of a parallelogram because it has two pairs of parallel sides. So we just need to do 180 minus that angle because we know co-interior angles add to 180. So we just do 180 minus 55 and that is equal to 125 degrees.